One, two, three, four, five. Whoops. Yeah, we're over there. Okay. Hello. Have you ever been interested in cinematography? Or maybe you've seen the title Director of Photography on movie credits, but you have no idea what it is. Today, I'll hopefully enlighten you about what the Director of Photography is and just a few of the basic responsibilities that they have on set. I will be referring to the Director of Photography as the DP throughout the speech because that's sort of the industry term because it's short for Director of Photography. So to give you a little background on myself, I've worked in the film industry for the last year as a camera assistant. So I've worked hand in hand with the Director of Photography on a lot of professional sets. I've also worked as a student DP on a lot of student films. So basically, there are two main responsibilities that I'm going to talk about that the director of photography has today. And these two main responsibilities are lighting the scene and then capturing the scene or shooting the scene. So in order for the scene to be shot, the first the scene has to be lit. The DP is in charge of how the scene is going to be lit. Now, they look at the bigger picture of this. They aren't thinking about every individual light. That's somebody else's job, and I'll discuss that in a minute. Now, there's a few different characteristics of lighting that they have to think about. The first is like the direction of the light. Say, do you want your light to be coming through maybe a big window, or do you want it to be um, like a candle lit dinner, or maybe do you want it to be the sun, or just to make it look like that, even if it's not that. And that's the DP's job. After that, they have to decide a few characteristics of the light, like the, tip, like the color of the light. So color is registered on, registered on the temperature scale, which is registered in Kelvin. So a very warm color would be something like 3200 Kelvin, which is a very orangey color like tungsten light bulbs. Daylight, which is more in the middle of the spectrum, is kind of blue, and that's at 5600 Kelvin. And then you can get up into like 9000 Kelvin, <coughs> which is a very blue color temperature. The other characteristics of lighting that they have to think about in general is whether they want the light to be hard or soft light. Hard light has very defined shadows and it's very sharp shadows. And normally it comes from a small source that <coughs> creates hard light, while soft light comes from a larger size so light source and that's going to create shadows that are a lot more diffused and a, a lot less de sharply defined. After the DP makes his decision, his or her decision about where he or she wants for the lights to look, he takes this plan to the gaffer. Now, the gaffer is the person who's in charge of the lighting on the set. Now, I know this sounds a little confusing because I just said the DP was in charge, but the DP takes the greater plan to the gaffer who decides where he wants each individual light and he <coughs> his, his electricians and grips where to put the lights, and they carry this out. Now, now that the DP has decided where he wants the, how the light's going to look, he then has to decide, make some decisions about how he's going to actually capture this. The first one is what lens they're going to put on the camera. Now, you could choose a very wide lens, which is going to capture a lot of things, like a very big shot, or you can choose a, what's a tel known as a telephoto lens, which is a very tight zoomed in lens. And they have to think about the composition of the shot. So let's say we'll use a close up, for example, which is just a shot from here to here, which is what you would see a lot of times in maybe a dialogue scene of a movie. Now you could use a telephoto lens, which would sort of squeeze their face in, or you could use a wide lens and frame it the same, but their face is going to look very distorted, which is sometimes referred to as clown face. And you might also use what's commonly like a 50 millimeter lens, which is basically what the human eye sees as more of a normal look. After they've decided this, they have to decide some things about how they're going to move the camera. Whether they want it to be just locked down on a tripod and not moving, or maybe they want the tripod to, uh, to tilt or even to pan back and forth. And then these are just the basic movements. Now there's some more complicated movements that you might see in a movie is what's known as like a dolly shot. So the camera is set up on a dolly, which is basically a cart that has a tripod hat on it, and it's on tracks. And that's what pushes in and out, or sometimes you'll see it tracking along. A director that likes to use dolly shots a lot is David Fincher. Another way they might do it is put it on a crane. And now you might think of this as like big superhero movies when the camera like starts up close and like booms way up into the sky and way away at like the end shot, like the final hero shot of the movie. But they're used a lot in in movies just in smaller moves that you don't realize. And one final way that they, type of common movement that you might see is on a steady cam. Now this is a device that has an, a body attachment with an arm and then the camera's on a balanced sled. So the camera doesn't move even though the body's moving. And this helps where you can walk with the camera and do like a smooth movement. So you might have seen people like walking through a hallway and turning a corner and then like they stay in the middle of the frame the whole time. That was probably achieved by a steady cam. 
So in conclusion, I hope that you all have learned a little bit about cinematography today. I hope that if you have some interest in it, that maybe you start to get a, just a tip of the iceberg understanding. And even if you haven't learned much today, I hope that maybe you at least learned what the director of photography is, and maybe even what a gaffer does. Thank you.